semiconductors are the foundation of modern technology, providing power to a wide range of devices, including supercomputers and smartphones. The capacity to manufacture sophisticated microchips has been a national priority for Russia, a nation that is striving for strategic autonomy and technological independence. However, although the global semiconductor industry is dominated by countries such as the United States, South Korea, and Taiwan, Russia's domestic production is still restricted as it is forced to rely on legacy nodes and contend with sanctions and restricted access to equipment. This video explores the capabilities, challenges, and opportunities faced by Russia's significant semiconductor manufacturing facilities. Micron, which is located in Zelenograd, is commonly referred to as the Silicon Valley of Russia. It is the most significant and largest semiconductor manufacturer in the country. Micron has its origins in the Soviet era and is currently operated by JSC Micron, which is a subsidiary of the Citronics Group. The company focuses its main process technology on 65 nanometer and 90 nanometer nodes, while a few older lines continue to operate. Smart cards, SIM cards, RFID chips, identification chips, and industrial microcontrollers comprise Micron's primary business rather than high performance CPUs. These products are feasible within Micron's technological constraints, as they do not necessitate cutting edge miniaturization. Despite official announcements of research into 45 nanometer capabilities, the fab is still significantly behind global leaders such as TSMC, which operates at 3 nanometer as of 2025. Nevertheless, Micron continues to be the foundation of the domestic semiconductor ecosystem in Russia. Angstrom and its subsidiary Angstrom T were also significant players in Zelenograd. Angstrom T was once considered Russia's most ambitious effort to modernize semiconductor production. To establish 130 nanometer and 90 nanometer production lines in Russia, the company acquired used lithography equipment from AMD's Dresden Fab 30 in the late 2000s, providing Russia with the ability to manufacture more sophisticated chips, such as processors, was a daring strategy. Nevertheless, the initiative was ultimately unsuccessful due to financial mismanagement, increasing debt, and dependence on imported equipment. Angstrom T was effectively insolvent by the late 2010s, and its assets were subsequently transferred to Russia's state-owned development institutions. Angstrom continues to exist in some capacity today. However, it is predominantly associated with the production of specialized components, discrete electronics, and legacy chips, rather than advanced microprocessors. Its failure emphasizes the challenge of maintaining a state-of-the-art semiconductor industry in the absence of consistent investment and access to global technology. The Scientific Research Institute of Molecular Electronics, or NIMI, plays a distinct yet significant role in Russia's semiconductor landscape. NIAM functions as a research and development center, rather than a mass production facility. It frequently incorporates its innovations into Micron's production processes, thereby supporting the design and prototyping of microelectronics. NIMI is not intended to compete with global commercial fabs. However, it is a valuable asset to Russia's strategic objective of preserving a domestic knowledge base in semiconductor science. Its efforts guarantee that Russia maintains engineers and researchers who are capable of advancing microelectronics, although production capabilities are lagging. Integral, a state-owned corporation in Belarus, serves as a complementary entity beyond the confines of Russia. Integral's primary concentration is on the production of industrial, automotive, and military-grade semiconductors, with a particular emphasis on chips that are based on 180 nanometer and older process nodes. Integral's production is not competitive in the consumer electronics sector. However, it is a source of support for the defense industries of Eastern Europe and an additional avenue for the production of legacy chips in Russia. Integral is strategically significant due to Belarus' close alignment with Russia. Working with Integral helps ensure a steady supply of basic semiconductors 
needed for important uses, since Western sanctions limit Russia's access to modern technology. Baikal Electronics is a Russian semiconductor design house that merits recognition, despite not being a manufacturer. Baikal developed processors, including the Baikal T1, based on MIPS, and the Baikal M, based on ARM Cortex A57, which were manufactured at TSMC using 28 nanometer nodes. These chips were designed for embedded systems, servers, and workstations, offering a Russian alternative to AMD and Intel. Nevertheless, the imposition of sanctions after 2022 resulted in the exclusion of Baikal from TSMC and other global foundries. In the absence of a domestic fab that could produce 28 nanometer chips at a large volume, Baikal's roadmap was halted. This situation underscores the critical barrier in Russia's semiconductor ambitions. The country lacks manufacturing capacity, despite the existence of design expertise. Comparing Russia's factories to those of global leaders reveals an immense disparity. Micron's 65 nanometer production is nearly two decades behind TSMC's 3 nanometer technology. Intel and Samsung are also competing at 3 nanometer and preparing for 2 nanometer processes. Russia is capable of producing chips for identification systems, smart cards, and specific industrial controllers, but it is unable to produce competitive high performance CPUs, GPUs, or sophisticated mobile processors due to this disparity. Speed is not the only factor contributing to this discrepancy. Advanced process nodes enable chips to operate more efficiently, which is essential for the development of a wide range of devices, including potent supercomputers and long-lasting smartphones. Russia is unable to rapidly catch up without access to modern lithography equipment, particularly EUV or extreme ultraviolet lithography, which is rigidly regulated by a small number of companies. Russia persists in its investment in its semiconductor sector, citing it as a matter of technological sovereignty and national security, despite the obstacles it faces. The government has announced programs to localize production, develop indigenous lithography tools, and train semiconductor engineers. Industry experts caution that the pursuit of 28 nanometer domestic production in the forthcoming years will be a protracted and challenging endeavor. Russia will likely depend on a combination of legacy domestic production, gray market imports, cooperation with Belarus, and the adaptation of older designs in the short term. This may be adequate for critical military and aerospace applications, where reliability is frequently more important than cutting-edge performance. However, consumer electronics and high-performance computation will continue to significantly outpace the global industry. Technology, finance, and geopolitics constrain the ambition of Russia's semiconductor fabs. Angstrom T functions as a cautionary tale, Micron remains the country's mainstay, NIME preserves research capabilities, and Integral in Belarus provides a regional supplement. Jointly, they maintain Russia's competitiveness. However, they are not at the forefront. Russia is confronted with the formidable challenge of establishing a domestic semiconductor industry from the ground up as global supply chains become increasingly constrained and sanctions intensify. Russia will confront one of the most significant industrial challenges in decades as it endeavors to bridge the technological gap with the world's leaders, despite the strong strategic drive for independence. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.